Hey friends, so another Jeep video. Um, I picked up a Harbor Freight um, remote starter switch. So it's just a button and a couple of really long alligator clips. It was 12 bucks. So I'm gonna use it to spin the engine over when I'm doing some testing. And um, I really need to get this engine out of here so I can get this to the frame shop. But before I do, I wanna, I wanna get to the bottom of why the engine doesn't run. I wanna see if I can solve that problem easily. So far, in case you haven't watched my other videos, this is cracked. This is the coil bar. It's a stupid invention by Mopar that reduces parts complexity, and it broke in the accident. And there's no conductivity between any two parts of this. None of these connectors have conductivity. There's there's like zero resistance, and any two of these um, uh, taps for the um, spark plugs, there's no conductivity anywhere. So. In my opinion, it's bad. Um, at a minimum, there should be 1,500 ohms between three pairs of these, um, and I get none of that. So, in the meanwhile, while I'm waiting for this part, um, so Advance Auto had it for like $150, um, but you still would have to order it. I, I don't even know why they bother to put crap like that on their website. Um, and Amazon had it for like 100 and Rock Auto had the Delphi version for like 78 bucks. So guess who I bought it from? That's right, Rock Auto. So anyway, um, I'm going to save that till the replacement part comes in so I can make sure it's exactly right. It's strangely heavy for as worthless as it actually is. And then I'm going to get to the bottom of... You know, I'm going to start testing my spark plugs. So I really need to determine, does this engine need a rebuild? Because when it comes out is a damn good time to do a rebuild. Um, I forget what the mileage on this vehicle is. Let's, let's look at that right this second, actually. So we'll just zip in. And no, we won't look at that because the battery is over here. Yeah. All right, so that ain't happened. Anyway, so um, the idea is that our starter is down here and the starter solenoids down there and if i connect the uh start button to it i should be able to manually turn over the jeep and with uh it, it just you know it'll let me check the compression very easily without an assistant so it's well worth 12 bucks to me so let me uh get under there and get those connected okay so here we are let's find a place to put this and then we can go up here is look it up into the light is fantastic not so we're gonna grab the red and the red just goes to the battery connection which is over here on the left all right so we're just gonna clip that on there for those that may be new to my channel uh, I suffer from carpal tunnel syndrome, so I don't have a ton of strength in this position. So if you see me struggling with the wires, that is what's going on. Um, my advice is be good to your keyboard. Now where the hell is the black wire? That's over there. pay attention to your ergonomics when you're young although I think some of this is just the nature of the beast of doing computer work for as long as I did So, that should give us the ability to push the button and roll the engine over. So let's find out. So, in order to test this, I need to get the battery back in here again. No big deal. It's been charging for most of the day. A nice gentle 2 amp charge.
which is a great way to re revive the battery. All right, so we got that on there. Now we're going to come in with this 10 millimeter wrench and just tighten these terminals back up. All right. And hopefully this does not get exciting. Oh, good. If there'd been a short in the switch, it could have gotten real exciting. All right. So let's see if it does what it's supposed to. So when we turn, push this button, it should turn the engine over. What do you know? It works. Awesome. So next thing's next. We need to get into the spark plugs. And before we do that, we need to blow the dirt out from around them. Because, yeah, it's a Jeep. It's got dirt. So let me get uh, set up for that. All right. So if you didn't wear glasses, you'd want to wear safety glasses. Alright, so let me see what size sockets these are. Alright, so these appear to be 5.8, so I'm going to come in here with a couple of extensions because have the extensions and honestly I just feel kind of lazy. It's just easier to reach in here with long extensions and break these loose. Now you can do this a number of different ways. This is how I'm doing it, is one spark plug at a time. So once it's broken loose we'll go ahead and it out of here. And that doesn't look too bad, but it's been there a while and there ain't no way in hell that gap is correct. There is no way in hell that that's the right gap for this engine. I mean, that's like an eighth of an inch. So let me deal with that because that could be another reason it doesn't want to start. It might not have been running real well to begin with. Myself up a Harbor Freight $29 pressure tester. You really got to be careful though. There's brass um, flashings in here that uh, you really don't want in your engine. So make sure if you buy one of these that you carefully check all the parts because you really don't want Swarf to get into your engine. Yeah, that's that's not good. That would do damage to the inside of your engine. So the Jeep uses M14 by one and a quarter inch spark plugs, and I think that's it right there. That looks about right. I'm just kind of eyeballing it, so I'll put that there, and then we will test it on the engine. Oh man, I really could have chosen a better one to get to. All of them suck. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use the extension piece for it. And then I can just thread this whole thing down inside here.
and I'm having hell getting it to go straight and go in there. a big muffler to make up for it. So I'm going to try a different trick. I'm going to put this down there with this. That just gets me into the hole. get a good test on this so I can determine if this needs to be rebuilt or not. So if I was going to design this kit myself I would make this about a four or five inch extension. This is killing my fingers. So maybe that's not right. I, I'm gonna take another one off because I can't, I, I can't feel, um, I don't know if I've got the right thread, so I'm just gonna jump back another two to where I have one that's accessible. My bumper is out of the way. It's been pushed off to the side. How convenient. And again, there's no way in hell that that's gapped correctly. It's just not. The gap is not an eighth of an inch. It's, it's, going, to, it's going to be a much smaller number on this engine. So let's see if we have better luck on this one. Sure doesn't feel like it wants to go. So let's see if we've got a difference. Feels like it's a little bit too big actually. And none of these are labeled, which is especially irritating. You'd think they would, like, just take the time to stamp on it what it is. This really looks close. Well, 
it suggests this should be the M14 size. And these are just a nightmare to get in here. So that's that's not fitting. I mean, it's just not. The big one's too big. I mean, let me see what this feels like with a spark plug. Normally these drop in and, yeah, see that one just drops in and threads in. Um, it's normally not very hard to get these in. Well, let me see if the native one is the right size. Well, isn't that fucking annoying? That is the M14. It was on the end of the hose all the way along, all the, the whole time. Oh, no, I'm wrong. No, I'm, I'm wrong. That is not. We really need to get a seal on this. Mm. We're back. So I don't like doing it this way, but I'm just going to push it in here and cycle it. Hey, wow. So we read 149 on the third cylinder. So let me write that down. All right, before I run that again, I'm gonna zero this. And uh, then I'm just gonna, I'm gonna run a second test to make sure I've got a good reading on that. So we're right at one, 149-ish.
And what I'm what I'm really looking for, uh, and then I'm going to look up what the gap is supposed to be, and I'm going to set that before I put the plug back in. Okay, so it's supposed to be 0 .040. That's this. What is it currently? A whole lot thicker. Let's see if the gauge can even find it. It's currently 0 .093. <laughs> That's crazy. Plugs look like shit, but that shouldn't really stop them beyond uh, beyond the obvious. All right, so that's 0 .040, and again, for comparison, let me show you where this other one is. I mean, that is bonkers. It's almost double. So let's put this back in. So that started, so now we'll hand tighten it. And then I need to get a torque wrench with the same size setup. So let me get that up. All right, so the uh, factory service manual calls for 27, um, pounds, foot pounds of torque for the spark plug. So we're gonna set our, our torque wrench for that. Now, I don't really like using extensions, but there's not really an option here. Um, so what you want to do is just be real careful to minimize it. That sure feels like more than 27 pounds. Let me see if I have a smaller torque wrench. It's not smaller, but it's certainly different. Oh shit, this one doesn't even go. This one doesn't even go that low. So that's out. torque wrench. I don't trust it. Um, I'm going to do them by hand at this point because I, I just don't trust that torque wrench. I'm using it on a bolt that's on the uh, bumper and it's just humming along. And I think that's more than 30 pounds of pressure. So I'm going to undo this and redo it to what I think is appropriate. So this one I don't need that much extension.
I think that's good right there. So where were we before we were so rudely interrupted as my sixth grade teacher, Mr. Larson, used to say a long time ago in a far, far away place. Let's reset it and see if we can get, we'll use the bent attachment, see if we can get in there a little better. You gotta watch your fingers on this first one though, because you got the, the fan right there. Yeah, that's still 120. So we might have a low cylinder in the front. I don't like to see that much of variation from one cylinder to the next. They should all be within about 10% of one another at most. Put us over 150. Plug in 120 when we're getting a little blow by. Let's see if we can get in here straight. We're still at 135, so that's within my 10%, but that's still lower than I would like. That feels like a nice, good seal there. We're still at that 135 number, so that's what I'm going to write down. And now, where did my gapless spark plug go? Ah, uh, there it is. So we're gonna set the spark gap real quick. And I will come back and let you know what I find on the rest of these. I'll also point out that this one's got a cracked insulator. I'm still gonna put it back in. Uh, that's at number one again. Um, I, these definitely are beyond their service life. Um, and so they're gonna get replaced. I just, I wanna get a feel for where we're at today with this engine to see if it needs to be overhauled when it comes out. That's another like in credit gap. Fucking amazing that it even ran at all with this kind of gap on it. So I don't like this cheap compression tester. The uh, 
rubber boot keeps sliding up on it. All right, so let's reset it and then we'll push that down in there. Yeah, this is trash. I mean, it's just pushing this, it's pushing this all the way up. And it really needs to be threaded on there and that would, that would put a stop to this. Let me see if I can get this piece of shit that's supposed to be an M14 one and a quarter to go on there because this is about the easiest one to get to. No, not happening. It's just not gonna happen. It looks really close without the adapter. I wonder what M14 they were using. None of this shit fits. Very, very irritating. I would not recommend this product from Harbor Freight for $29.99. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't be having problems with it. That's enough money that they should be able to make a quality product. So I'm going to switch to the other one. And I mean, I have a compression tester somewhere, so I'm going to switch to this one. But this should be anchored on here firmly enough that you can push hard on this and not have, not have it come loose. So that's only 120, but I, I, you know, I'm getting blow by, so I don't, I don't have confidence that I'm getting a good reading on this. That's in that 135 range as well. So I'm gonna work my way through the rest of these. Now, I anticipate this last one is going to be a pain in the ass to get in and out of here. So, enjoy the view and the show. For one thing, it's really hard to reach back here. Make sure I'm even going the right way. Yep, I'm going the right way. Got the wrench on it. <clears throat> there are a dozen different kinds of wrenches that would be really good at this, and this is not one of them. <clears throat> As predicted, it would try to bite me. Now, this one back here is the one you got to watch that you don't strip in or you don't cross thread it because these ones that are real hard to get to are real tempting to do with a wrench and that's how you will do bad things that are a pain in the ass and expensive to fix so you just got to be more patient than it is even though it's an absolute bitch to get to because nobody at Chrysler actually works on anything. They just design shit that looks nice and uh, is a pain in the ass to work on.
just literally can't reach it. At least not easily. The grill stabilizers are kind of in my way. Let's see if I can reach under it. That's a little better. And then I don't know what this rubber thing is, but it's in my way too. Looks like some kind of drain. Another stupidly gapped plug. Yeah. Right, I'm gonna try and get a compression reading in here. No, we're not seating. <laughs> I just can't get in here. There we go. That looks better. Oh, no battery and no AC. This would be a piece of cake. It doesn't even sound like I'm making... that one uh, it's low I, I can't get a reading on it so I'm gonna gap it and fight it back in there and call it a day the gaps on these things are so bad that uh, they're almost double what they should have been it's really just a wonder that they even ran that might be why I had an accident going to be an absolute pain in the ass to get back in here. I'm just going to have to crawl up on top of the engine to do it. Yeah, the transmission uh, dipstick tube is in my way. So I've got a swivel socket, and I'm going to see if it's going to do me some justice today. No, I'm not. I'm, I want to start from the end. And I scrape it off. This is definitely a spark plug that would be very easy to cross thread. And I suspect that there are plenty of these that get cross threaded because it's so hard to get to. Now, in all fairness, it is back further than it should be because of the accident. So the access should be a little bit better, but not a whole lot.
right, so that's as torqued as that's gonna get. So just for shits and giggles, I'm gonna spin the engine over and see if it sounds different. Yeah, still sounds like it doesn't have a spark. At least I know why right now. Uh, you know, really, I gotta wait for that new coil to come in, and then I'm gonna pop that bad boy in there and see if it will, uh, if it'll run. If it will, I will not be surprised. I'm not seeing any uh, damaged lighting, other than my flashlight. So it's time to put the battery on. There's really not a whole lot I can do. I mean, I guess tomorrow I could start taking this out because, I mean, it doesn't have any coolant in it right now anyway. And if it, even if it ran, it wasn't gonna run for very long. So, oops. Yeah, there's some kind of sensor there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I gotta start taking this out of here sooner than later, so. But that's not tonight's project. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy the video. Don't laugh too much.